Hello. I've got some explaining to do, and initially, I can't prove anything because of ongoing investigations. But in due time, the facts I'm recounting will be brought to light and proven true. My name is Ezekiel Ryans, and I prefer the nickname Easy, not Zeke. The reason I feel compelled to make this video is because I feel that what happened to me should be a lesson to others. Also, to defend what I still believe to be true, the whole thing about, you know, not throwing out the baby with the bathwater. So, I am a Bigfoot hunter. Please save your laughter and skepticism, that's not the point of this. Any comments about Bigfoot not being real, or comments about Bigfoot even being real, will be deleted. Seriously, there are plenty of places to discuss that online. So, I'm a Bigfoot hunter, and I've been in the cryptozoology community since the early 1990s, before the giant influx of TV shows. As you might expect, just like with any other community out there, there are those that politic and jockey for respect within the community, and for positions. Tied closely to that, there was a war between those that like and or defend the sensationalist TV programs, and those that dislike them and think that they misrepresent us and or mock us. I'll do my best to avoid that debate, but on the down low, I side more with a louder camp. I just don't care for those people very much. This story begins with a trip I'll be discussing in a moment, but we can take this back to when I met two specific people. Greg Denver, or Denver, and Jenny Wang. I met Denver at a Virginia Bigfoot conference about four years ago. I was giving a panel on survival craft while Bigfoot hunting, and another panel on Bigfoot hunting, what to bring. Because while Bigfoot hasn't killed anyone as far as we know, Bigfoot hunting certainly has. I'm an outdoorsman, and these TV shows about Bigfoot have brought people out of their homes and back to nature. So I'm making a nice little side business out of teaching suburbanites how to camp. While I'm happy camping no matter what, other people need a hunt to stay interested, either hunting deer or hunting Bigfoot. You know, not hunting Bigfoot, but trying to get footage of him, capture, you know, this elusive creature. At the back of the room, studiously taking notes, was Denver with some of his friends from Ohio. Later in a room party, I actually met Denver, and we hit it off over some blue ribbon, and then some wild turkey, and then some more wild turkey. Denver was one of those suburbanites I was talking about. His parents were country folk that moved to the city for work, and he knew about country life when he was young. And this Bigfoot craze brought him out to nature again and made him want to reconnect. He had the right attitude, and his trips into the wood were the greatest reward for my seminars. He shared pictures and short videos from his hunts over the internet, and we became good friends. Not that night, however. That night in Virginia... He could have been anyone, and we would have been friends. We were all just shit-faced. It wasn't until the next conference in Virginia that we really became friends, meeting up regularly to camp. Just about every long weekend we got, we'd meet up to visit Mothman in West Virginia or hike to Keystone, Pennsylvania, not far from where I reside. Denver was a short guy, very clean-cut, without a mean bone in his body. He was half white, half black. Um, he liked uh, Japanese cartoons and video games. He was a vegan when I first met him until some dietary problems he ran into. I think you get the idea of what kind of person Denver is. Jenny is a different story. Not everyone can get along with Jenny. Jenny was very brooding and didn't enjoy most trips and get-togethers. Not a people person, you know. But one-on-one, -on -one, Jenny was a great friend, just not one that you talk with when you're having problems. She was very tall and muscular, an avid runner and even a boxer, but not a violent person at all. 
Despite what I've said and how she could rub people the wrong way, she was desperate to avoid conflict. She avoided it like the plague. She could have easily brutalized many cheesy guys in bars if she didn't. The only time I actually saw her actively get mad at someone was when a certain someone tried to crash a party I was throwing. Her facial expression alone pushed that woman out of the door. Jenny's gone. She's dead for sure. I watched it happen. There was nothing I could do. She shouldn't have died, and no matter who says it's not my fault, it doesn't feel true. I shouldn't have brought her along, and recounting this makes me miss my friend. It makes me reflect on how weak and frail humans are. Something didn't feel right about the proposed trip. See, Ginny was a videographer by trade, not a cryptozoologist by hobby. She thought I was silly with my Bigfoot hunting. But Denver really wanted a video crew. And with little money for one, he'd have to settle for just Jenny. Denver previously mentioned attitude was missing when he suggested we go on a trip to Big Harm State Park in Montana. I was busy all year making good overtime at my day job and hadn't spent time with Denver or uh, paid attention to any of the Bigfoot stuff when my vacation time was arriving. With my 5, 9, and 16 year old work and selling my old house, I needed a relaxing vacation. But Denver was adamant that we go to Montana. So with one of my two weeks off, I decided to take the first one on a trip to Big Arm with my kids at my parents' house, and week two would be with my kids at Mountain Thunder Lodge in Colorado. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I feel that it might be needed for the story. I've written out some notes here, and I don't want to leave out anything important, so there's that. Ginny was brought along for 300 bucks plus traveling expenses and other expenses, you know, all the stuff that she needed. That was way below what she normally made, but I just kept talking and talking until she agreed. <sighs> it was a mistake for so many reasons. Our flight was pleasant, and we met Denver at a Motel 8. Instantly, I knew things weren't going smoothly. Jenny thought the motel was too cheap, and it was clear Denver was penny-pinching. Jenny wasn't shy about making fun of the cheap rooms, badly framed kitschy art, and the small shower, and, you know, just anything she could nitpick on. She commented that she was surprised that the beds weren't infested with bed bugs. It was awkward. I think you can understand the tension that was there. After getting acquainted, she just spent the rest of the night in the small motel gym before retiring to her room. Things were less tense in the morning. We're all morning people and the flight had us all grumpy. After breakfast, we purchased a few supplies, grabbed some Starbucks, got our permits in order, and set out hiking. Spirits were generally high with one small exception. Denver's double barrel shotgun. It was your run-of-the-mill Stoger, but it put vegan Jenny on a teeny bit of an edge. Not much, but I could see her eyeing it with resentment as Denver led the way. He had an in-depth plan on where to go to see Bigfoot and spent most of his time checking his map and his compass rather than taking in the scenery. This was very unlike him. I can't stress how much he took on board my worldview about hiking, and it seemed like all of that was absent now. When not actively documenting Denver and I's interactions, Jenny and I conversed. While I obviously didn't see Denver as much as Jenny, I knew the more that 
me and Jenny talked, the less cause for trouble there be. Denver seemed happy to focus on his little documentary thing, even if I didn't understand the appeal. We'd been Bigfoot hunting before and nothing happened. Did he really think this time something would happen? Plenty of people try to get footage, but obviously it's largely chance. I mean, obviously, he, he could hardly pay for one cameraman. He couldn't keep doing this until his job paid more, gave him more time off. I was worried he was getting wrapped up in wanting to be Bigfoot famous. That's not something he'd normally worry about, but this time, he was all work and no play. He was acting like the bad parts of the community, wanting nothing more but to get big, catch footage of Bigfoot and give lectures. But unless we got lucky, we weren't going to get that elusive footage. Most recent big footage was clearly faked. Especially the shows. Reminder, this is not the place for that debate, but... A lot of it. Um, anyway, so I didn't want this hunt to turn out to make him mad. It was like he had a desire to get footage, not a desire to see a, an, an elusive majestic creature... I carried on conversing with Jenny and hoped that Denver was making this film for personal fulfillment. At sunfall, we started setting up camp, and it was funny to see Jenny, the most fit of the three of us, knew nothing about setting up her own tent. I cooked up some vegan-friendly stir-fry over the fire, and Jenny and Denver set up some trail cams. Speaking of which, when they returned, it seems that they had started to bond over the subject of veganism. Denver had, has, some meat-eaters guilt. I didn't care for the topic of veganism, I ignored it the same way Jenny ignored my cryptozoology. Yet, I encouraged the conversation because it helped group cohesion, you know. In a somewhat superficial way, but jovial, you know, like... It's like, it was clear they didn't do a 180 on each other's views of one another. But they acted like they did, hoping that it'd stick. It was really kind of cute. Food was consumed and recipes were exchanged between Ginny and Denver. At that point, I was hoping that the next two days in the woods would go well. The wilderness can always challenge newbies and veterans alike when it comes to getting along with one another. But Denver found a way to connect with Ginny. That put me at ease. Once done eating, Ginny and myself wanted to go into a food coma. Denver wanted to shoot a few things, however, explaining his trail cam locations on camera. I decided to set this one out and read one of my two paperbacks, Escape Clause by John Sanford. It's not bad, by the way. Less than a chapter of reading, and I wondered if I should have gone along to make sure things stayed positive. When they returned, they both looked absolutely bushed. Jenny said she was going to sleep very tersely, we said our goodnights and retired to our tents. The sturdiness of Jenny's demeanor was nothing new, but I couldn't tell if it was obscuring a real anger or frustration. I figured she just wanted to sleep, but it left a bad taste in my mouth. I've always kind of had this problem with Jenny. Worried or not, I passed right out from exhaustion of hiking and, you know, the stress of keeping us from being at each other. I did hear something moving in the night, which I believed was Denver answering the call. I was woken by Jenny asking for help using our camping stove to make coffee. Denver was still down for the count. I walked Jenny through the process of making coffee with these neat little portable coffee filters a friend found at an Asian grocery store. Jenny sounded a little congested and when I asked she said that the coffee was loosening up the mucus in her head. As I pulled out some medicine I brought for just such a situation, she mentioned that the Bigfoot bait smell was still in her nose. What? I said rather confused. Bigfoot bait? I've never heard of Bigfoot bait, and if such a thing exists, it obviously doesn't work very well. So in the course of questioning Jenny, it turned out that Denver was tasked with testing out some experimental Bigfoot bait. Instantly, I was uneasy with what this meant. 
I've seen this story before, people selling snake oil to gullible saps. Now, at my panels and events, I give out business cards so that people can contact me and I can get more business to give these lectures, which is a sizable little bit of money. And I sell t-shirts that say, I'm ready, with a cartoon version of me ready to snare a Bigfoot. People sell plush toys of Bigfoot and artists sell prints of their work and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm fine with all of that crap. Those are mementos. Those are things to anchor you to these memories of these little get-togethers we have, you know? But some people sell dreams. And I got worried that Denver either wanted in or fell for it. I was praying that he just fell for it. When Denver woke up, he saw a happy Jenny with coffee in hand and a disgruntled me, worried about this bait drawing bears near. We had a chat about this bait and its very real dangers of drawing wildlife to us. Denver avoided the questions by saying he was testing it out and that he didn't think it was a big deal. He claimed it was far enough away from the camp for it to be safe, never mind going to retrieve the trail cams where the bait was placed. This person, who was a novice camper just two years or so ago, was telling me, a lifetime camper, I didn't know what I was talking about. I explained that I heard something in the night, and he explained it away as pure chance. It was like he believed that this might actually help us find Bigfoot. Hazards be damned. I'll spare you the details of my ultimatum and the demands that he stop using the bait, as well as the tension-filled hike that ensued. The only thing worth mentioning is that conversation was sparse, and my outrage at Denver made Jenny clam up. She didn't know what problem it caused by mentioning the bait. It's in her nature to blame herself for that kind of thing. That was the start of my real regrets. Outside of that, I did what I do when angry. Observe the scenery in all of its splendor. The plan was to walk southwest that day, camp and set up another four trail cams, and then double back in the morning. We must have walked non-stop for two hours when Jenny said she needed to pee. Alone, Denver apologized about not talking to me about the bait. I said, I'd accept his apology when he apologized to Jenny for causing drama. And he agreed and explained that he was sorry for leaving a bad impression. It was a very long-winded and good apology. Denver was good at accidentally making an ass of himself, so he got good at apologizing. Jenny said everything was fine as long as we acted like nothing happened, and we did, and we took a break to eat. We hadn't actually eaten breakfast because of the drama. I started packing and hiking, hoping that it would make the trip go faster in vain. This time, Denver cooked up some red lentil soup with lemon zest and cilantro. Jenny loved it. I thought it was okay. But looking back on it, I really enjoyed that meal. Once we resumed walking and talking, we began actively filming again, and things were actually more pleasant than before. Jenny was conversing too, almost like she was a part of this little film project, when before it was just focusing on Denver and myself. We caught sight of a gang of deer. It must have been a family. We slowed down to collect some footage of them. Denver said he wanted to overlay audio on this footage explaining that just seeing wildlife of any kind was a treat. I thought, thank God. He's just a pansy for this Bigfoot bait thing and not a huckster himself. But that brought to mind something I had forgotten to ask. Who did you get this Bigfoot bait from? Still, I didn't want to ruin the moment. So I waited until we set up camp that night to broach the topic. His answer, again, worried me. A guy, he said. I pressed him and pressed him and pressed him until he said it. The worst 
answer he could possibly give. Todd Standing. Pardon my French, but fuck. If you don't know, Todd Standing is a known con man who very few respect in our community. He's Bigfoot famous in the worst way. He produced really fake looking big footage, had an unsuccessful Kickstarter, and is known for having problems accepting reality. But a handful of people actually respect the guy and think he's been on the wrong side of drama purely by accident. But Jenny and Denver both reminded me that we were supposed to forget about the subject. And I agreed. I had to respect that. But not before asking why. Why did you think this was a good idea? He was convinced this widely laughed at footage of Sasquatch was real, but not just that, that the secret behind it was this horrible smelling bait. Apparently Todd told him to keep their work relationship a secret. Now wonder why a con man would do that. I let it go and decided we'd have a real talk about the situation after the trip. Later when Denver was away answering the call, I apologized to Jenny for bringing the subject of Bigfoot bait back up, explaining I didn't think the answer would be that stupid. I had trouble hiding my frustration with Denver from then on. Jenny asked to enter my tent in the middle of the night, whispering. She told me that Denver had set up Bigfoot bait at the trail cams when they went off shooting again. She asked if it was dangerous. Now, I had bear spray on hand, but I was even more furious. But there was nothing I could do. When all was said and done, I couldn't sleep due to my anger. In the morning, I apologized to Jenny before tearing into Denver for being reckless. He felt since I brought up the topic, he was justified in breaking his agreement to stop using the bait. So angrily, silently, we hiked back to the first campsite. Eleven and a half hours of nature sounds. No more filming happened. Just Jenny listening to her headphones. I just hoped... I didn't ruin our friendship by bringing her along. When we got back to camp, I pitched my tent, had some loose leaf tea, and read the rest of my book. Reading took much longer than usual because I had to pause because I was mad. I was just stopping to read because I was mad, because I couldn't focus on the book because I was mad. When I finally was more tired than angry, I was able to sleep. Denver came to my tent excited, whispering that a real-life Bigfoot walked by. I said he was full of shit, but he was insistent. I grabbed the bear spray. But I thought, shit, what if he's right? In fact, he might be, what if the bait worked? All three of us started hiking, slowly and quietly. I was both excited to see a Bigfoot and worried I might have to eat my words. Jenny said she saw it too. The same Jenny that would never buy into anything of this kind. Jenny didn't say maybe it was a Bigfoot. She said it was a Bigfoot. We headed down towards the river by a trail cam. And there it was. Right in front of the camera. As soon as we focused our flashlights on it, it bolted and... As it did so... Denver did something I'd never do. Something a real Bigfoot hunter would deplore. Denver pulled out his shotgun from his backpack and fired at this beautiful hairy creature and it was down whoop 
The only sound audible after the gunfire being the lumbering creature hitting the ground and ruffling the leaves. We approached it. Wordlessly. It was barreled over on its side. Lifeless. But shining my light on its face, I instantly knew. This is Todd standing in a Bigfoot suit. You killed Todd standing, I said to him, looking at Denver. Denver was shaking. I saw his hands nervously fiddling with his gun. He asked me to grab the trail cam, but not before but not before Jenny tried running like our would-be Bigfoot. And just like Todd, Jenny was shot center mass. She was silent. She was gone. Adrenaline filled, I had one hope. I pulled down the barrel of the gun as I stomped on Denver's knee at a sideways angle, perhaps cracking it, breaking it. I couldn't hear anything from all of the blood pumping, with the gun in my hand and Denver on the floor, immobile. I ran and secured the trail cams and hiked and hiked and hiked, and I dropped the shotgun somewhere along the way because it was too cumbersome and I made it back to civilization, and I went to the police, and I slept on the police bench afterwards. This is my story. Again, like I said, this isn't the place for a debate. Just a lesson, I hope. In any community, there will be those obsessed with drama, and those that want to bring others into it. Sadly... Sometimes, they'll get the best parts of the community involved in drama. Misery loves company, and so does crazy. I'm compiling and uploading this today because trail cams 1, 2, and 3 have been released to my custody. 4 is evidence, and 5, 6, 7, and 8 are missing. Good luck finding them. The videos at the first campsite have been found and also taken into custody. Denver is under arrest and awaiting charges. Todd Standing is dead. Con artist or not, that's a human life. And Jenny is also dead. And she didn't need to be involved. I believe in Bigfoot, but I... The, the cryptozoology community will have to find one without me. I'm sorry to all the positive people in the group, but you're going to have to go on without me. And I hope that you stay positive. And of course, I'm sorry to the Wang family and all of Jenny's friends. Ginny was a good person. Yeah.